going on guys i am the mystical green beanie so the concept of legacy has been in my mind for a while regarding comics in particular superhero comics because it really feels like for the past few years legacy has become a bit of a buzzword for a lot of people because now whenever people hear legacy their first thought is And a lot of this is tied up in the culture war stuff, and if you want, I can make a separate video going through the recent history of comics and how we ended up with a culture war in comics, but legacy characters have always been a thing in comics. Female, POC, LGBTQ, straight, whatever. Legacy is nothing new when it comes to cape shit. Hell, just having characters who come from different ethnic backgrounds or are of an alternative sexuality or having a non-american nationality or all of the above is nothing new so if you're one of those people where your primary grievance with modern comics is there's too many gay people or too many non-whites you're either not a comic book reader and jumped onto the pop culture bandwagon and started complaining for the sake of complaining, or you are painfully deluded, more so than a man who insists on cramming barbed wire up his ass because somebody on 4chan told him that it was the best way to keep his colon clean. But something that I do want to stress, regardless of uh, their race, gender, sexual orientation, religion, or what have you, Making legacy characters for pre-existing, well-beloved, or even just generally liked characters is risky. It's very risky. Because here's the thing, not just with legacy characters, but with characters. People who read Superman comics generally don't read them because they simply like his costume, or his powers, or the fights that he has with aliens or robots or whatever. They read Superman because they like Clark Kent as a character. Same deal with Iron Man. People who read Iron Man comics don't read them for the armor or the robot battles. They read Iron Man because they like Tony Stark as a character. People read Wonder Woman because they like Diana Prince. People read The Amazing Spider-Man because they like Peter Parker. People read Batman because they like Bruce Wayne. People read comics based on characters that they like. The more superficial stuff, like costumes, powers, you know, gadgets, and all that stuff, it's just chocolate frosting on the nipples. And at least from the outside looking in, this is something that I don't think a lot of modern comic book creators understand. It's that legacy characters, from the get-go, are facing an uphill battle. You know, like, if I'm in the mood for a Daredevil comic, you know, I'm going into it expecting Matt Murdock to be Daredevil, because that's the purpose for which I'm reading the book. And if I pick up an issue and Matt Murdock isn't Daredevil, well, then we're already at a rocky start. But this is also the most crucial part. It's the writer's job to justify with a damn good narrative hook why Matt Murdock isn't Daredevil. Why is somebody else wearing his costume? And all of that just comes down to the story being told and how well it's being told. Because that's the other thing that I don't think gets talked about enough. Generally speaking, comic book readers will be happy to be proven wrong if they think a book is trash or devolving into trash. There's that phrase that you often hear from people in comic shops or even social media and forums and the like, I hope they stick the landing. You know, like, I'm not feeling the status quo, I'm not liking the direction that the book is going in, but I hope they can stick the landing. And really, that's all we want. You know, we just want good stories with characters that we really like and new characters that we're open to learning more about. 
and this is a dead horse, but I'm going to beat it harder than my dick on prom night. It doesn't matter what concept you have. All that matters is the execution. You can have a good concept and execute it poorly. Just like you can have a poor concept and make it better than it has any goddamn right to be. But it all comes down to how well you can pull it off, if you can pull it off. And that's the problem that legacy characters have. And just, I find it silly. You know, this cope that comic creators have when a new legacy character is announced and readers are, understandably, not initially on board to just say that comic book readers are racist or sexist or homophobic or transphobic or any other kind of bigot. No, no, no. See, that argument is about as solid as my shit after I consume nothing but Taco Bell and Hennessy for about a week straight. Like I said earlier, there are LGBTQ characters that comic book readers really like. There are POC legacy characters that people really like. There are female legacy characters that people really like. So no, it's not the characters that are inherently problematic. Again, like I said earlier, legacy characters have an uphill battle from the get-go. But if they don't take off, you know, if people don't respond to them, warm up to them, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten years after their creation, that's the fault of the creative teens for not justifying them taking up the mantle of the character the readers were buying the book for in the first place. Case in point, Riri Williams. Tony is killed in one of the worst comic events in recent history, and Riri is set to take his place as the protagonist of his book, Strike One, and on top of that, she just wasn't a likable or interesting enough character to maintain my interest, and really, the interest of a lot of Iron Man fans in the book, Strike Two. And if we're gonna add insult to injury here, she's a second-rate Natasha Irons lacking anything that makes Natasha a character that people actually care about, Strike Three. Same can be said for Miles Morales. Well, okay, hold on a second. Comic book Miles. I'm strictly talking about Miles in the comics. I really like Movie Miles. I think Movie Miles is great, and I think Insomniac Miles is serviceable and alright. But as far as the comics are concerned, he's boring. There's nothing to him or his stories not beyond vaguely interesting ideas and concepts that are actually fleshed out in other mediums. But in the comics, Miles is a reskin of Ultimate Peter Parker, down to being a witty teenager with an interest in science. Except, he's not poor. Doesn't really have any childhood trauma that lingers with him into his teenage years. He goes to a pretty high-end boarding school. His best friend is a tech wizard who builds all of his gadgets for him. Doesn't really have any girl problems. No real personality defects that add drama to his life. None of the reasons why you'd read a Spider-Man comic are here. But at the same time, there's nothing added to take its place or subvert standard Spider-Man tropes in the same way that Into the Spider-Verse does with Miles, as well as Insomniac does to a certain degree with his character. But also, other Spider-Man titles without Peter Parker, like Spider-Man 2099 or Spider-Girl. Hell, I'd even accept if the book were trying too hard to blast me with something that's full of the exaggerated swagger of a black teen. But he doesn't have that. He's just milk toast Peter Parker, but Afro-Latino. And he's coasting off the striking visual of being a person of color in the Spider-Man costume. But those are just two examples of bad legacy characters. And honestly, there are definitely more among the litter. But fortunately... There are dozens more that aren't poorly executed concepts, and they are well-rounded characters who do live up to the mantle of their predecessors, and in some cases surpass them, becoming the definitive version of that hero in a lot of people's eyes. All it really comes down to is having a solid creative team with a solid pitch that justifies upsetting the status quo with a damn good story. And I know that's a lot easier said than done, especially from behind a computer screen, but I wouldn't be saying it if I hadn't seen it done countless times already. And all it takes is one story, one run, one event to turn people around on a character. It just has to be good. 
But what about you? What are your thoughts on legacy characters in comics? Who is your favorite legacy character? Whether they be a superhero or a pulp character or a non-Marvel DC character or whomever. Whomever? Whoever? One of those two. Let me know down below in the comment section. Also, if you like this video, hit the like button, share it, support the channel, and if you want to see more content like this, all you have to do is subscribe. I'm the Mystical Green Beanie. Thanks for watching, and as always, until next time, adios, nachos, adios.